Hello. Um, you know that the, the government and the Ayush department in India has now kind of allowed homeopaths to treat COVID cases as an adjunct to standard protocol. And many of uh, our colleagues and uh, are now invited actually by hospitals to come and treat COVID cases. And also many of our patients who develop COVID uh, infection ask us for help. This being the situation, I thought I could uh, share some of my experiences and certain things that helped me in treating COVID cases. This talk is meant especially for early practitioners. I'm sure that uh, more experienced practitioners would know what I'm saying. And uh, maybe they can also pick up a few of my experiences, but especially early practitioners will be benefited by this talk. So I want to thank certain doctors, colleagues, and who have been working with me in COVID cases and whose cases are included here also. They have been working together on some of these cases. So Dr. Shrikant Talari, Dr. Sonali Bonsle, Dr. Faiza Khan, Dr. Meghna Shah, Dr. A.K. Arun, Dr. Shiti Mehta, the team from Prana Homeopathy Yoga Center in Pune, and the team of the Other Song Academy in Mumbai. So thank you all. You know that I had given a talk about 10 days ago, I think. And you can see that on the YouTube. It is called Perspectives in the Treatment of COVID-19. And if you have not watched it, please watch that video. Because this is taking this to the next step. And what I discussed in that video was that in COVID cases, you see three level of symptoms. And you will see one of these three levels more prominently in each individual case. The first is the level of the pandemic itself. So there are some common symptoms of the pandemic. Secondly, you will see in some patients, the acute symptoms are very, very prominent. And what do you mean by acute symptoms? Symptoms that have come on since the onset of the infection. They were not there in them before, but in the onset of the infection, they developed this acute totality. And then in a good number of people, you will see the symptoms of the constitutional remedy coming up in the acute. So you will see one of the three is very prominent. Either you will see symptoms of the pandemic is very prominent or the acute totality is prominent or you will see that the constitutional remedy is showing itself even in the acute. These are the three possibilities. What are the symptoms of the pandemic? First is great weakness. They describe this weakness as a sudden weakness. Sudden great weakness. Especially it is found in the lower limbs. They find it difficult to walk and uh, the limbs seem to be very, very weak and the whole body seems to be very weak. And along with this weakness often is found the loss of smell and taste, anosmia and loss of taste. So this is a little bit like an anesthetic state also. So something like a collapse 
anesthetic weak state so in this state there are not too many aches and pains you do not see restlessness you do not see you know any active symptoms and uh, you see this weakness and this kind of anosmia or loss of taste in you see the mind state in these patients you find that either there is a relative lack of anxiety which means the patient is admitted in a covid ward but he is not anxious i mean he knows that you know there are some chances that it can get complicated it can lead to mortality also but he doesn't seem to be concerned about it in that sense or he on the other hand he can be quite cheerful which you find funny it's like almost he is having a picnic there or what either you will find this mind state or the opposite which is panic great panic the fear to be left alone the feeling of isolation my god i am all alone where have i come in this ward my god there is nobody here i am feeling so panicky what's going to happen to me i am forsaken everybody has left me i am totally alone and isolated so either of these two manifestations you may see in uh, in this kind of and this mind state with that weakness that i spoke to you about is the indication for camphora so when you see that the the main totality is weakness anosmia loss of taste sudden weakness weakness of the lower limbs but the mind state is not anxious or it is cheerful or it is in panic of isolation of being alone this is uh, the indications for camphora and you will find that in a very very large majority of patients because you have, you have, many of these are asymptomatic cases you know 80 85% of cases are asymptomatic there are no symptoms he has the infection but he has no symptoms is almost like an anesthetic state in some sense so these are the cases that will benefit also from camphora the asymptomatic cases or these symptoms which i told you now let's go to the next which is the symptoms of the acute so either you will get this pandemic symptom which i told you about where you can give camphora or you can get acute symptoms which means you will have to take the acute totality you will have to take the peculiarities of the chill the heat and the sweat stage what are the time modalities what are the other modalities what are the concomitants in chill what happens in heat what happens in sweat what happens where does he sweat what kind of you know things happen during these three stages and if the, he has any symptoms what are the location sensation modality and concomitant he may have headache he may have dyspnea he may have body ache whatever it is cough then the general state how is he in general is he relaxed is he restless is he anxious is he sleeping is he dull is he drowsy etc and then the details of the appetite thirst and sleep and the mind state and the dreams during the acute so this totality of the acute may indicate you an acute remedy and the third possibility is that the symptoms of the constitutional remedy are showing itself in this infection also so the main symptom what you see is actually the symptom of the patient from you know uh, all time from before also and you can see that chronic in the acute the most peculiar symptom of his acute will be actually the same remedy as his constitutional remedy this is also possible and this we found in a very large number of cases in fact i would say a very high proportion of cases okay so depending on which level is prominent you have to prescribe at that level so i want to give you some case examples illustrating these three levels and how we prescribed in these cases 
So first of all, I must tell you that all these cases, most of them were admitted in the hospital um, and uh, we treated them. And also that they were side by side on the standard protocol, what the hospital was giving. So not, I think, except one or two cases or maybe three out of what I'm going to show you, most of them were on a, you know, on a standard protocol also. But uh, when we gave the homeopathy, the result was quite uh, significant. And all these cases which I'm showing you are cases which have done well. Most of them have turned also COVID negative and are symptom free right now. That's the reason I'm showing you. So the first case I'm showing you is a, of a woman, age 27. And she says that, uh, she says she had to attend too many calls because, you know, somebody else was turning positive in her house. And then she decided, I don't want to attend any calls. I don't want to respond to any message. And from the moment she decided that, she's feeling very happy and cheerful. And somebody said, oh, you look so cheerful. Are you on weed? Are you taking cannabis or something like that? Even on the phone, when, uh, when our doctor took the case, this case was taken on the phone, she sounded very cheerful and happy. And she said, others also say, are you on weed? Have you taken some drug or what? So this kind of feeling, decide to shut off the world. You know, I don't want any calls. I'm just now I'm going to live in my own bubble and I'm happy. This kind of feeling is very typical of, of uh, camphora. You can see the painlessness like opium. You know, it is from the same subclass, the first subclass, positive and cheerful. So this is one presentation you can see here that if you put these in the MAC repertory remedy graph, cheerful, painlessness and positiveness, camphora is one of the remedies that is coming up over here. So she also, you know, I don't have to say that all of them did well. That's why reason we are presenting to you also. So now here is a second case which shows you exactly the opposite picture of camphora, which I want to show you. This is a very tragic case where the woman's father, he contracted COVID and he passed away. Her mother and she both tested positive after that. The mother was hospitalized and now she was in the home with a six-year-old baby and she was tested positive. That was her state. And uh, what was her main symptoms? So what's happening to you? Symptom right now, she said, I have severe, severe anxiety about my daughter because I feel I don't have any place I to keep her. Nobody is ready to keep her given this, uh, you know, COVID uh, um, label that we have. Nobody wants to keep my daughter. So there is a alone child who is forsaken, who is isolated. And now I'm in panic. What am I going to do with my daughter? This is the state of her mind. And she says, honestly, doctor, I feel like killing myself and my daughter. At least all this harassment will stop. You know, this is the state she was in. You see, the exact opposite, this panic, this, my God, it's too much for me. I cannot take it. It's too much for me. All, everybody's scared. Everybody's worried about their own life. I'm calling my cousins. I'm calling my relatives. Everybody has deserted me. This is the fact of life. So the feeling is I'm totally alone and isolated. I'm in panic. This is the opposite state of I have no problem. I'm cheerful. I'm happy like on a drug. So if you see these rubrics from again from Mac Repertory, You'll see the desire to kill, the feeling to be deserted, shrieking for help, the despair, the helplessness, and the influenza-like symptoms. Again, you see camphora is, is a remedy. She did very well on this remedy also. So she was admitted. Again, I tell you, she was on standard protocol, but she did very well. So you can see the two opposite uh, polarities of Camphora, one is 
this panic, isolated and uh, fearful, you see. And uh, the other side is shut the world off and I'm happy and cheerful inside. Like how we are now in COVID, we remain isolated, khana, pina, must, we are very happy. This kind of state also is camphora. And this panic, my God, somebody will get me this and I'm isolated, I'm alone. This is also camphora. So a third case, a 22-year-old female with sore throat and headache, heaviness, slight nausea has taken HCQ, weakness, dizziness. When she wakes up from the bed, she feels dizzy. She has loose motions and before the motions, pain in the abdomen. She has to rush and passes little stool at a time with which she feels better. So these are her symptoms. She has nausea, but no vomiting. General weakness, droopy eyes, but she said, I'm going to recover. I have no anxiety. I feel dizzy, drowsy and nausea and thirst is less. This was her state. She got camphora also, mainly because of the absence of anxiety and the presence of weakness. These are the indications that she got camphora on. And uh, she also did good. Now, a 36-year-old male started with fever, no symptoms. After three days, he checked 100.6, admitted in ICU. The only symptom is sore throat, dryness in the throat. Thirst is increased a lot. Sleeping a lot. Generally, generally too, in fever, I like to sleep. This theme, now you can see here, it's a different picture. The first picture is very strong thirst. Number two, very intense dryness. Number three, I just want to sleep. I don't know, just I want to remain in my bed. I want to sleep, that's all. These are exactly the indications of bryonia. What are the symptoms of bryonia? High thirst, lot of dryness, and want to be in the bed and in the same position don't want any kind of disturbance. These are the indications of bryonia. Nobody bother me, that's all. So here, you see that weakness is not the main symptom. The symptom is dryness, thirst, want to be in the bed, nobody disturb me. Okay. Now, another picture you can see here of the acute. 36-year-old male person, loose motions, distension, offensive stool, fullness of abdomen. When I think about the illness, I feel weakness. So what are the symptoms here? Offensiveness and anxiety about his disease, weakness and palpitation. It's not the anxiety to be isolated like you saw in camphor. It's the anxiety, what will happen to me, to my health? It will deteriorate, I will die, something will go out of control. And desire for company, I feel better. And he's worried about my money, my work, everything I'm losing, I'm losing my money, I'm losing my health, I'm losing my job. Okay? I have to keep things clean. I need everything in order. I need everything clean. And it's better by warm water. You see? So this weakness, this anxiety, he cannot sleep till 3 o'clock. His time modality after midnight. And the feeling that what I have is going away from me. My job, my health, my money, it's all going away from me. This is very specifically the theme of arsenicum. So you see that in the periodic table, arsenic lies in the fourth row, which is the row of money, security, home, job, health, stamina. And arsenic is on the right side, which means the feeling I'm losing it. It's all going from me. 
you see so this is the feeling of arsenic whereas in bryonia the feeling is i want my comfort zone i don't want to be disturbed i want to be in one position this is found in the fourth subclass in the plant kingdom where they want this kind of one position no motion no movement no change just let me remain in my bed this is the theme of fourth subclass bryonia okay so you can see now the rubrics here thinking of complaints aggravate diarrhea during fever offensiveness desire to go home better by talking anxiety with weakness and palpitation sleeplessness until 3 am in the morning and these are all the indications of arsenicum you can see the repertorization through macrepetry is also giving you arsenic so you can see now the acute manifestations here you can see acute manifestation of bryonia of arsenic what is the acute of camphor also you can see so he was given arsenic carb 200 three times a day now my colleague dr ak arun he is from delhi and he is attending many symptomatic and asymptomatic covid 19 patients and uh, after talking he made a kind of excel sheet of 70 patients that he treated successfully treated and uh, i think he treated only with homeopathy if i am not mistaken i am not sure about this but that's i think what he told me and uh, he found that out of these 70 58 he prescribed camphora to two he prescribed arsenic to four he prescribed bryonia and to three he prescribed china and to two he prescribed eupatorium perfoliatum so this is the data that he collected from his 70 cases and these are all people who did very very well with the remedy so but this this data does not mean that we should give everybody camphora or even bryonia or whatever it is it simply shows that there can be some remedies that are coming more commonly and we should know a little bit about them what are the indications of bryonia once again the main indication is great great dryness therefore large uh, thirst for large quantities of water do not want to move do not want to change his position this is the opposite of rustox who want to constantly change his position and don't want to be disturbed irritated when you question them also today i had a covid case and i said what is the symptom no she is just sleeping all the time if you go near and ask question she says i don't want you go away you know don't disturb me right now this is the primary indications of bryonia in arsenical the feeling that i am losing something mere haath se nikal raha it's going away from me you see my health is going my money is going my job is going my god my future is very insecure i am very restless what is going to happen to me my life is going from me and then you have the midnight aggravation the better by warm drinks in on the whole and the thirst for little and often these are the very very keynote indication most of you know this and then what are the indications of china periodicity if the fever is coming very periodically it is one of the indications the bitter taste in the mouth is a very very almost mandatory symptom of china and the desire of china is for fruit and juicy things refreshing things and the mind of china is stimulated as sleeplessness and lot of thoughts and activities of mind because it is coming from the family of coffea china and coffea are from the same family it is called the rubiaceae 
So this is stimulation is one of plans, ideas, thoughts, 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 thoughts. Don't let you sleep. And one of the symptoms of China, because it is also from the malarial miasm, is of course the periodicity and the weakness also, but also the feeling of unfortunate. Why me? Why it happened to me? Why everything bad happens to me? This is one of the mind state of China. Why I got the COVID? You know, why others didn't get? Why only everything bad, unfortunate? happens to me, my luck is bad, you know, I am troubled, I am harassed. Why everything troubles me? It can be a very important indication of China also. You see the rubrics, persecuted feeling, you see the feeling, unfortunate feeling, obstructed feeling. It can be all China. So these are some of the prominent remedies that come in the acute. Gelsemium is another one. And in gelsemium, along with the drowsiness and the thirstlessness, you will find also the feeling of shock or bad news. I, I saw the report. <gasps> I was shocked. This feeling of shock and surprise must be a part of gelsemium. And this is because also it comes from the same family as Ignatia, which is called the Loganiaceae family. And the main theme of Loganiaceae is shock and surprise. What? So these are some, so I'm just giving you very, very well-known keynotes, but we have used these in COVID cases. That's the reason I'm uh, telling you and some of the most frequently indicated remedies that are coming. Now I want to tell you something very, very important. We found that when we did cases of COVID, uh, we found that uh, a very good number of them actually indicated their constitutional medicine during the uh, COVID also. And how does that come? How does that manifest? I want to show you through some cases. So let's see the first case is a 26 year old male. And uh, the doctor of our team doctor asked him, so tell me a little bit how it all started. So he starts only his history like this, you know, he says, I like martial arts. I like Bruce Lee. I like fitness. I train for one hour a day. I make people stand on my abdomen. So that why I want to be fit. If I'm attacked by five people, I can handle that. I can hit five robbers at the same time. My God, Hari, we are talking about you're having COVID, my friend. But see where the prominence is. Even in the COVID, his idea is, you know, martial arts. Why? Now he gives you the context. He says, you know, on 20th April, I did more exercise. Maybe because of that, I developed some swelling on my thighs. Maybe. But then it was followed by severe vomiting. I could not even drink water. Every two hours I would vomit. Nothing would stay in the abdomen. And I felt as if my whole intestine would come out when I'm vomiting as if there are knots in my intestine. Now, this kind of peculiarity is very, very interesting because now see, try to understand what is the peculiarity in the COVID? The knots in the intestine, the severe, severe vomiting as if the intestines would come out. What does it mean? That means almost like a spasm, a severe spasm. And then, Is it going okay, Shiti? Yes, sir. Because I saw the recording is still there, no? Yeah, yeah, it is on. Okay, okay. So severe, severe spasm. And uh, as if the whole intestine would come out. So then he says about himself. Now we talk about him. And he says, you know, I am inspired by Obama and Abdul Kalam. 
and people remember them after their death my photo should also be there after i die that this man did something good then he said iraq should not have been attacked innocent innocent people are getting killed in syria they are getting killed i should be a good person who should be remembered for his work i should have good name and respect that means what is he talking about performance i must give such a good performance that people must remember me so what are the themes of his mind being attacked developing strength developing fighting ability and performance these are all themes of mineral kingdom to develop your ability and then comes the theme of attack and defense the theme of spasm and then the knot in the intestines you see so when you put all this together and go in the reference works you can put here knots within three words of intestine and then you put attacked within three words of delusion so the feeling is going to be attacked in the same remedy as knots in the intestine the sensation of knots in the intestine exact words of the patient and when you do that you found the remedy cuprum metallicum and cuprum is a remedy of severe spasms everything happens in spasms convulsions vomiting everything is severe spasms and that is his main symptom so he got the remedy cuprum metallicum and he improved very nicely so you see how when you you know when you hear the story of covid actually his original state comes up with an acute symptom knots in the intestine and severe spasms with the vomiting that is also indicative of cuprum and then you see the mineral kingdom and you see cuprum itself your cuprum is the remedy that wants to do martial arts and that because he feels that suddenly something can attack him and he must have the ability to defend we'll talk about a 36 year old male who is actually a ward boy in the hospital and he got covid and what is his main symptom complete loss of appetite he said normally i feel hungry between 10 and 11 in the morning but now i have no thought of having food i feel weakness i feel slight fever i feel heat in the soles and forehead he says i had 1 kg of yogurt or curd one week back because i like milk products i had three glasses of lassi lassi is yogurt drink butter milk i will drink one glass more i want a lot of malai malai is cream i want the butter milk full of cream and i can have seven glasses of very thick yogurt drink lassi and i like jaggery and i am worried about my family so you see the first thing we understand from him is this intense craving for milk and milk products this is what we need to see and this is not his symptom during the acute it is all the time so now you know that in his case most probably he will need his original remedy only and not an acute one let us see he says my father had an accident he is unconscious in the intensive care unit i am supposed to take care of my mother and sister i feel like weeping but i cannot weep because i am a responsible person i control my emotions i don't show it during the grief i had coriza i had headache i feel there is no hope my father will die i started weeping my grandmother's health is not good she says she is going to die i get very emotional and weep so what do we see along with the desire for milk a very 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 sensitive and emotional person but he cannot express his grief because of the strong sense of responsibility this is the story what we can see he says i had an affair with a girl and we were both married you know she is married i am married but i had an affair with her 
and my god i thought oh my god my reputation in the society will be spoiled i am not worried about you know somebody beating me up that's not my fear but when i get scared i get trembling of the legs and then when i have arguments and then i you know this is all this i can fight for other people i fight for my staff you know one employee in my company committed suicide they tried to suppress it but i fought with them you see and i also want to be fit i want to go to the gym so these are his symptoms so what do we know the desire for milk the very sensitive person very responsible he suppresses his grief he wants to fight and he is very very sensitive to being embarrassed you know that's a, what reputation what will happen to me if they find out i am married she is married if it comes out my god so this is the story and we took the rubrics like the desire for milk wants to fight the weeping easily the trembling the cannot support injustice he is very sympathetic his strong sense of embarrassment strong sense of responsibility and his legs tremble as if when frightened so when you take these peculiarities you get ignatia and you know ignatia is a plant remedy very very sensitive very much silent grief holds it inside strong sense of duty and responsibility and you can see all the symptoms of the patient in the repertory mac repertory you can see is ignatia and that is the remedy he received because there was no much difference between his constitutional remedy and his acute remedy even now he is thinking those things only what will happen to my father and all of these stories you see nothing different so he got ignatia 200 now i want to talk a little bit about severe cases so what have we spoken about so far that when there are asymptomatic cases or only cases of the symptoms of the pandemic which i told you is great weakness sudden weakness and along with that either no anxiety or panic and isolation so these are the cases for camphor so in asymptomatic cases you can use it very nicely also well the second is when you have acute manifestations so you need to take the totality of the acute and you can find remedies some of the frequent remedies arsenic bryonia china gelsemium also camphor then we spoke about that in a good proportion of cases the patient's main indicating symptom also indicates his constitutional remedy his mind state is the state of his constitution his cravings aversions also are like that you see in these cases you have to give the constitutional remedy that comes because his acute symptoms are not peculiar and the pandemic symptoms are not prominent okay so this is how you have to handle it now i'm I've, i don't have too much experience with severe cases by severe i mean people whose oxygen level have gone below 90 or they are on ventilatory support etc etc but in the couple of cases that i had i will show share with you one of them so this lady age 70 with full oxygen flow she is breathless weak profound weakness i cannot get up i don't understand what is happening to me i have burning in my palms and my stomach and sometimes the whole body is perspiring i feel my limbs are restless and uh, she she says i feel very breathless with weakness i cannot get up i have bitter vomiting bitter taste anorexia and i am not even sure where i am where am i I, am i on the ground or am i somewhere else where am i exactly i am even confused about that she is saying she has got dryness in the mouth the thirst is less and she worries about her grandchildren etc etc her respiratory rate is increased and uh, she has vertigo she is too weak she cannot get up and she wants to put a cold cloth on her soles and her hand because they feel burning 
So she got camphora 10M every six hourly. So this profound weakness with the desire for something cold on the extremities is a good indication for camphora along with the profound, profound weakness. And this lady, she also recovered. Of course, she was on standard protocol also at the same time. Now, I want to talk to you about a very, very important aspect. So we have talked so far about individual remedies. But I want to tell you that you have to be very vigilant in these cases because the remedy can change. You may need to change the remedy. I want to show you one case where we gave three remedies, camphora, arsenic and china. So this is a lady of 56 years old. She is COVID positive since 10 days and the symptoms are also since 10 days. She was doing certain sessions in the building and then she started feeling very tired. She sweated a lot from the slightest exertion. She even fainted and she was very weak. And uh, then she got palpitation and low grade fever. She was taken to the hospital. She was suspected as urinary tract infection, but ultimately the COVID test came positive. She was very low emotionally. She says, why this is happening to me? My father is not well. Why all this is happening to me? The first remedy she was given was camphor because of the weakness and the symptoms of the pandemic. That was on 23rd of May. On 24th of May, there was no improvement with the camphor. So when this remedy is not shown improvement in a single day, you need to think again. And uh, I think I told in my last video also that I am not married to camphor. So I am able to, <laughs> if the patient is not better, I think again, you see. So there is no, you, you see panacea or one size fits all in homeopathy. And uh, every case will be cured by that. No, you can say this remedy is very good, but no remedy, uh, you can say, fits every case. Okay. So if the symptoms are changing and you are not able to see the relief, you have to change the remedy. So on 24th, she, uh, she had severe weakness. She started drinking water in sips, very, very anxious about her father's health and her own health. And uh, there was changes in the oxygen level that her made her even more anxious. So I, by this time, you know that this is good indications for arsenic, which she was given every six hourly. You can see on the next day, she was much better in terms of energy and anxiety. And uh, she slept. It was a positive. I mean, she was feeling positive and her anxiety reduced, the cough was better, etc., etc. And she, we continued the arsenic 1M. One, uh, one but then on 27th, now this is a little funny story I want to tell you. She's saying, I am doing better. I said, okay, tell me more. She said, well, everything is okay, but my sleep, I was not able to sleep last night, you know, till 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, I couldn't sleep. I said, why you could not sleep? Were you anxious? And no, no, anxiety was not there. But my mind was so full of thoughts, so many thoughts. Thoughts about what? So she said, you know, thoughts about the future, thoughts about some ideas and plans. And so I couldn't sleep. And I said, uh, what do you mean? She said, as if my mind will not stop thinking. It was like thinking, thinking, thinking. It was not unpleasant or anything like that. Simply it wouldn't stop. And I said, tell me a little bit about you. And she said, you know, I'm a very creative person. I love writing books also. And so then I understood that actually now she needs China and not arsenic. And here is the joke. So I told her, now you, you stop the arsenic and you take the China. Because I don't see the anxiety of arsenic, I see the stimulation of China. You see? And uh, she said, no, 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 don't stop the, don't stop the arsenic. I'm feeling better with the arsenic. Don't stop it. I said, you're the doctor or I'm the doctor. You better you stop the arsenic and you start China now. 
So I was a little firm. And so she started China. And now let us see, because why did I give China even though she was better? Because the indications of arsenic had gone. When the indications of the remedy goes, you have to change the remedy even if the patient is better. Because you have to treat the state that there is at that moment. So anyway, after we stopped the um, arsenic, started China and what happened? She got very anxious and the next day she said, my anxiety is, oh, my bag, you should have continued with the arsenic. Now I'm, why did she get anxious? Because we stopped the arsenic. You see? So she thought, I'm doing well. I, we stopped it. And psychologically, her anxiety started coming up. And I said, nothing doing. We are continuing with China. Why did I say that? Because I realized that that was her constitutional remedy. You see, and this would do the best for her. Arsenic is gone. And I said, just stay with China one more day. And naturally, from the next day, she improved like crazy. And uh, she's totally okay, back to normal. The uh, only thing was that we tested her again. And she was still positive on the first. And tomorrow... Which, which is uh, tomorrow is going to be the ninth, uh, eighth or ninth. She is going to be tested again tomorrow. Hopefully, it will be a negative report because she's so completely all right, so completely all right. So you see, in this case also, is that um, how you need to be vigilant. You see, if either the patient is not better, you need to change the remedy. If the patient is better also, if the symptoms are different, if the state is different, you need to change the remedy. You see? So you need to be very vigilant in, uh, in these cases. Now, just a word about potency selection and repetition. So the emotions and local symptoms, if these are prominent, the potency is 200. If the general symptoms, the mind state and the dreams are prominent, then it is 1M. And if the symptoms are very intense, for example, you have intense weakness, intense something. That means the uh, more you can see at a very, very sensation and energy level manifestations, then you give 10M. So, for example, if the patient is on, in a severe case on ventilatory support, if any hospital would allow us to do a treatment of these cases, of course, along with their standard protocol, I would suggest 10M, maybe Camphora 10M. Um, as far as the repetition is concerned, normally it depends on the intensity. I normally give two times a day. If it is more intense, three times a day in very acute situations, every three hourly. And uh, we reduce the frequency and stop when the symptoms abate. And then put the patient on placebo. Um, as far as the preventive aspect is concerned, I just want to say a little bit more. Now, in India, the lockdown has, uh, you know, is, is being uh, re relaxed a little bit and people are coming out on the streets, etc. And the incidence of the disease, in my understanding, is going higher. And so people are asking for preventive medicines. I had suggested camphora originally. And uh, what we did is we gave it to a large number of people, not only in India, but in Brazil, in Romania, in France and so many places. And uh, the reports that are coming in are very good. So we sent out a survey form and people filled it out. And we got, uh, we, we had, you know, people re responding to the survey. About 2,454 people responded to the survey with Camphora. And you can see all the details, the average age, the male, the female, how many people in the house their travel history, comorbidity, compliance, frontline workers means high risk 
and then how many tested positive out of two, four, five, four? In the survey, only four. And how many deaths reported? One. So this may not be, you see, the most accurate form of, uh, you know, uh, understanding or judging something. But so far, reports from many places are good. In Brazil, for example, more than 2 million people have taken camphora as a preventive and it's being distributed by five municipalities. And my colleague, Dr. Carlos Eduardo Leitao from Curitiba in Brazil, he reports that they are finding it very effective. But anyway, we are giving it and uh, so far as I can see, it's doing very well. So that is about the preventive aspect. And I would like to give you one email so that you can share your feedback, your experience, and your suggestions or questions, anything like that on this email. It is called covidexperiences at gmail.com. And uh, if you have any surveys with camphora or other remedies, cases treated, uh, if you are doing survey yourself, it's very worth doing. Or if you want us to send you our survey link that you can pass on to, you know, people who took camphora or any other remedy as a preventive, you can ask us and we will send you this survey link. It takes only less than two minutes to click on your phone, you know, yes, yes, no, no, yes, yes, like that and send it. And it comes to us and you become a part of that survey. That's, that's uh, what we are doing. We can happily send you this link if you want. And uh, any other experiences you have you want to share, you can please uh, send on this mail. So that's what I wanted to share with you because now, you know, the government is opening to homeopathy and to Ayush as an adjuvant treatment in uh, Corona cases. And we have a lot to offer. And uh, I, I think it's an important time for us to be a part of this uh, great uh, fight against COVID. And, uh, I think homeopathy should do very good in it, provided we follow the principles and uh, take very good cases. You see, you have to do very good cases, understand which level, you know, is it the pandemic level or the acute level or the constitutional level or the severe level? Where is the patient? Where is the most prominent thing coming up? And then, according to that, we have to you know, mark our remedy. And I tell you, in a good, very good proportion of the cases, the constitutional remedy is also coming. So please give attention to that. And don't try to give everybody, you know, camphor or bryonia or arsenic or something and try to, try to, you know, just uh, so solve the issue like that. It's not going to work. Take, give attention to every case, individualized treatment, and uh, yes, if it is a mass, you see distribution and you can't see the patient, that's another story. Then a genus epidemicus like camphora can be used for prevention or a kind of mass treatment of asymptomatic cases or something. But when there are symptomatic cases, it becomes our duty to do this individualization because that brings the best result in my understanding and in my experience. So good wishes. Stay safe, take all the precautions, social distancing and whatever that you have to do. Advise your patients also, no treatment is a substitute for taking precautions. Uh, stay safe and uh, all my good wishes to you. Bye for now.